So today's facilitator, we have with us Dr. Patrice A. Mason, and she is known as the superintendent's chief consultant. She supports superintendents, principals, and educational preparation programs to help develop champions for children, with their focus really being on the well-being of both adults and children. Patrice is the designer of the Child's Champion 5D Mason model, the three-level turnkey professional development system that's used to develop school leaders. She has over 25 years of leadership experience, and she has taken herself from a homeless teen to a principal to a CEO. We're very lucky to have her here with us this morning, so please help us welcome Dr. Mason. Yeah, well said. Thank you so much. I am really, really excited to be here today. Um, I got to tell you guys, I just have to tell you transparently, like, something that I think that you will find great value in. But first, I got to know, um, I know I've got some amazing folk in this room today. So let's just see if you could just shout out your name and let me know that you are um, with the organization. Jerry, I take it that you are. Is that right? I am. Thank you for attending this today. And we are excited to have you as part of this and hopefully many more. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. You guys feel free to call me Patrice. And let's see, um, who else do we have? Hi, Dr. Mason, it's James Allen with School Sims. I'm glad to be here with you. Awesome, thank you so much. And I do recognize all the leaders and the team from School Sims. Who else do we have um, in the organization today that showed up for today's School Sim? I think I saw another name. Is it you and me, Jerry? No, we got Lauren Myerston, who is one of our Granite State Leadership Academy candidates, and uh, Kristen Wilson, who is one of our uh, co-chairs of one of our curriculum instruction and assessment regional groups uh, we met with this morning, whose school district has no power today. Awesome. Oh, gosh. Hi, Dr. Mason. Um, hey, how are you? So we've got Kristen, we've got I'm Jerry, and then we have Lauren, is that right? Yeah, hi, nice to meet you, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks, all right, and then we have the phenomenal uh, School Sims team. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, like we've been knowing each other for like 60 seconds, but I'm gonna just tell you, when I was a kid, like around third or fourth grade, um, I, for whatever reason, I was blueprinted in thinking that the way I would pronounce the state that you're in was New Hamster, okay? New Hamster, I thought that was how I pronounced it um, or the way to pronounce it. So for the longest time as a child into uh, maybe around middle school, I was saying New Hamster. I had this idea that as an elementary school kid that that's where the world of hamsters came from. <laughs> Okay, I want you to know that just in case that blueprint kind of shows up um, and I'm saying that instead of New Hampshire, you know the story behind it, okay? You have full permission to say Patrice. Uh, yes, reminder, but I think that was uh, very fitting because um, you know I, I was fascinated over the state of New Hampshire as a child. And today I am just thrilled to be able to connect with you all um, about children, about the service of leadership um, and about all that you have and you are doing. I wanna also let you know, know that, um, you know, as a previous administrator, both um, at, at all the levels, elementary, middle and high, and with the work I'm doing, I relate to the great task that's before you. Um, I get it. I, I relate to um, the platform that you have before you. And I wanna commend you, I salute you. And today I just want you to exhale. I want you to breathe. And I want you to know that we're going to have an engaging, um, empowering, empowering moment um, for the next minutes that we're together. Uh, this is a powerful tool, School Sims, and we're going to jump right in with this tool. Um, I got going with School Sims when I was uh, attending a, um, the AASA, and immediately upon learning about this tool, I knew it was something that my firm, um, that we could support others in sharing with them. And so that's why um, our company is connected to this powerful and strategic partnership of School Sims, because it really does, um, in so many ways, um, support the leadership building of others. Okay. All right. So here we are. Are we on um, present mode, Brian? Yes, hopefully. Yes. Yes.
All right. So what we have here first is want to share with you that um, there's a dashboard at the beginning of all the various school sims and there are a plethora and in fact Brian was just sharing a moment ago that even more are coming out and you'll notice that right at the top part of the screen where it looks like red lights yellow light green lights um, in some ways that nine circle grid is really a way to track and support um, knowing whether or not decisions um, that are being made are they lending themselves to be best um, or are they good decision making uh, concepts that are being discussed and you know this the first one is around administrators um, and then the second row uh, is uh, each of these are about administrators teachers and parents so it really helps to gauge how might one's decision impact that particular group of stakeholders okay so i want you to keep that in mind um and if you're ready to start um lauren kristen and jerry just do me a favor right now and just click in the tap or type in the chat that you're ready let me know you're ready just put in that you're ready i know i'm ready i'm ready to be here You are the newly appointed principal at Mary McLeod Bethune High School, or MMB, a mid-sized high school with 600 students. The population of the school is primarily students of color, largely African American and Latino. Graduation rates have been far below the city average for the past few years. After serving as assistant principal at another high school in the district, you were selected by the superintendent to replace the outgoing principal at MMB. One of your assistant principals, Kevin Turner, has been at the school for seven years and is tenured. The outgoing principal had led your other AP, Karen Matthews, to believe that she would have the principal job. She was sorely disappointed when you were selected, although it seems like she is trying to be a team player. AP Matthews will be up for tenure at the end of this year. The simulation begins in November shortly after your appointment was formalized. After a huge back to school push in September, attendance has improved and many long-term absentees have returned to school. The higher enrollment means more students in classes. Teachers have gotten used to fewer students in classes, and as a result, they don't always seem to be very diligent about getting to know students and following up with students who miss assignments. You continue to be focused on providing a high quality education to all students. In the beginning of each Sims, context is given around the scenario. Uh, I like to think of them as case studies, if you will. And also, you'll find that there's going to be some disruptors along the way. You'll hear some signals, such as a signal for email and uh, perhaps uh, some other disruptors. And I want and just like in real life, this is how the Sims works as well, that there's no turning back. Okay, so in the beginning, um, we're setting the stage. Let's see what happens as we move on. Um, I want to ask permission for this. So this is the part right here. If you are facilitating a sims, you could choose to read this aloud, have your group to read it alone, or you can ask if they would read. Um, because we're a, a small and phenomenal group today, I think it could be beneficial if I could have us to read aloud and me not do it all alone, right? Because we're doing this together. Um, can I have your permission? that we would share a reading aloud, is that okay? Jerry, Kristen, and Lauren? Sure, sure. Awesome. All right, so let's start with, um, somebody just go ahead and jump in. Let's listen to a little bit more of the context as one of you read that information for all of us, please. Just go for it, just jump in, someone. Okay. So November, larger classes. The efforts you organized to improve attendance in September and October brought in so many more students that class sizes are much larger than last year's average of 20. Many classes are pushing into the high 20s and even low 30s, approaching the maximum of 34 students in a class. As principal, 
You are managing your communication with a host of stakeholders, students, parents, teachers, and administrators. The Parent Association President, Clarissa Taylor, has known AP Matthews for several years and has a strong relationship with her. It is common knowledge that Clarissa had favored AP Matthews for the principal job. And while she is cordial with you, the fact that you got the job instead continues to loom in the background as you try to forge a relationship with her. All right, high five Lauren for jumping in there. All right, so with this being the stakeholders management, are you starting to see the picture of everything that's being painted here? All right, let's go on. And then I'm gonna ask for the next person to just jump in with that one. Thanks Brian for your help, by the way. All right. So here's an email from the principal, Clarissa. Jerry, since I met you first, go for it. Sure. Subject is crowded classes. I wanted to write you a quick note to let you know that Karen Matthews has been very helpful to many families and to our association. She continues to amaze me with her knowledge, dedication, and responsiveness. She maintains strong relationships with parents and has assisted in the coordination of trips, raffles, potlucks, just to name a few. We are lucky to have her, and I know she will make a great principal someday. I keep hearing the classes seem much more crowded than last year. I've even heard that some students have had to stand because there are not enough desks. Along with many other parents, I really hope that classes can be smaller like they were last year. Thank you, Clarissa. Awesome. And you all may notice the, the symbols that are at the very bottom that happens to be under Clarissa's name. These are helpful symbols. For example, if we were to click on the question mark that's where you can get help. Um, there's one you can click on to get additional documents. Sometimes the Sims offers details, um, budget, et cetera, uh, more information that really allows you to go as deeply as you deeply as you may like around the group and the topic being presented. Um, there's even a group here where you could click on um, where it looks like there's the, the couple of people there to click on that it gives you the overview of characters you're going to meet so i just wanted to kind of share that with you now let's keep building on to this um the context of what we got going on with this so we can start some discussion soon i'll read this one too meeting with assistant principals you're meeting with your two ap's continuing to discuss teachers who are not following up with students who miss assignments it seems like the higher levels of attendance have accentuated this problem. At the same time, you are still pushing for any remaining LTAs to return to school. You've gotten some pushback from Karen and expect to get more at today's meeting. As usual, your other AP, Kevin Turner, makes limited contributions to the conversation. So already we know we've got several stakeholders we've got to consider, several, and we are still building the context. You, what is LTA? I'm sorry, I'm not gonna miss the context. The LTA um, is, I think it's germane to that particular um, group. And then what I can do for you, I'll pull that document and I'll share that with you so you can read the details of it. How's that sound for you, Jerry? Yeah, that's fine. Long -term I, absences. No. Again, please. It was long-term absences. Thank you. Perfect. All right, so after the meeting, shortly after that occurs, AP doctor, um, with the APs, then the doctor, Alberta Sanchez, who's a superintendent, she visits the school, and after a brief walk around, she speaks with you in your office. Let's see what she says. First, let me congratulate you again on your recent appointment. I'm confident that you're up to the task of setting the school on a course toward higher achievement. As I walked around today, the classes seemed fuller than last year. Congratulations on improving attendance. However, instruction could still use some improvement, especially with the larger classes. Many teachers don't seem to be comfortable with the larger class size and have trouble meeting the needs of all the students. I'm sure you've observed this yourself, and I look forward to seeing some positive outcomes. You can't do it alone. Your APs are vital to making it happen. I'll speak to so you have ever Matthews was not pleased that you got the principal job instead of her. I recognize that presents a particular challenge in working with her, but I trust you'll hold her and Mr. Turner accountable for their performance. 
the instruction at this school has to improve. Can anyone relate to this type of conversation? Have you, have you been on the other side of the desk for this type of conversation, Jerry, Lauren, or Kristen? With the current work you're doing, can you relate to that superintendent or maybe uh, not your superintendent, but your boss coming in and having uh, that discussion with you? All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, Lauren, do you would you like to go for that or Kristen? Challenges ahead. Thank you. After the superintendent's visit, you take a few minutes to reflect on what you are, uh, what you have heard from her, from AP Matthews and from the PA president. There seems to be concern about the larger class sizes, but so far no other parents or teachers have raised the issue. Your reflections are interrupted when Mr. Ambrose, a veteran biology teacher, stops by your office and you are afforded the opportunity to hear directly from one of the faculty. Okay. We have a quick minute. One of the students in my class is uh, back in school after being out for months. It's great that he's back, but he's really having difficulty catching up to the rest of the class. I've got two other students in similar situations, and I have to say that it feels a bit like a revolving door around here. Students out, students in. I mean, it's really hard to have classes this large with so many of the students at different places. It's like I need to write five or six different lesson plans for the same class. It's crazy. Anyhow, I just wanted to let you know. Have a good day. Okay, let's do a quick check-in right now. Given the stakeholders that you've met already on the Sims, what, what's going through your mind at this time? Um, just pitch in, let me, let me hear, let us, let us know. What are your thoughts around what's occurring? Were you going to say something, um, Jerry? There are some comments coming into the chat too. Oh, okay. Um, the teacher sounds like he's currently teaching in COVID times, long-term absentees. Some comments that are coming uh, in. Yeah, Lauren, you're right. <laughs> you're so right, Lauren. She says that the teacher sounds like he is currently teaching in COVID times. Yes, I concur. Jerry, were you going to say something? Just want to give an opportunity. Yeah, I was just, you know, it's important to acknowledge, I think, you know, what they, what the feeling is. Um, and there are different strategies, you know, um, you know, you, you, sometimes it's just being a salesman is part of it. You know, acknowledge, you, you know how you, how they feel, you felt the same way. But you also share what you found in dealing, you know, I know how you feel, it's a bit overwhelming. You know, I felt the same way at times, but here's what I found. And, you know, let's get together sometime and talk about some of the strategies that, that you know, we, we can accomplish. Because obviously there's a, you know, there may be an opportunity here to engage with the two assistant principals too, to get everybody on the same page and put out the right. fire before it becomes an inferno. Yeah, yeah. That human factor is so important. All right, let's go. There's a note of apology um, dropped off the secretary. Um, and that apology that was dropped off is from AP Matthews. And it says, I felt that my tone was a bit sharp in the meeting today, and I wanted to apologize. I think we have a great team and I value your leadership. So it looks like she's having some reflection about that. Okay. All right, um, <clears throat> phone call comes in. You heard that little sound. That's one of the disruptors I was talking about. After Mr. Ambrose departs, your first year principal coach calls to check in. Perfect timing. What would you like to talk with your coach about? And normally, in fact, you know, you can today if you'd like, but just know that this is a feature that's offered. Type in your response below. It will save, be saved, and made available at the end of the simulation after you click next. I'd love for us to be able to share right now aloud 
um, what your response might be given the context of what we've shared today around the stakeholders. Anyone? Can you clarify what a first year principal coach is? Well, that's a great question. Um, and for me, and it, it can vary depending on various states. Um, here in the state of Ohio, where I live, um, what that looks like is that there is a coach sometimes internally, there's a system built, a program built, built or there's an outside company that comes in and supports the success and the competencies being built for that first year coach so that they can, you know, um, again, be successful. Does that help you? Yeah, it's just um, in New Hampshire, we, we have um, the New Hampshire Principal Association, but there's no communication. Um, well, actually, never mind. Yeah, we have them as mentors. So that's that, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Thank okay, you. Yeah, Chris, so that's good. That's good because it could, it might be where they call them mentors. Um, again, okay. I've seen something different. Each one they called it, I've seen it be a new and emerging institute. Um, yeah, great question. All right, so what might your response be here? I mean, I think that I would, you know, if I was that new principal and my, my mentor had reached out to me, I think that I would just say, hey, this has just popped up on my radar. Um, you know, and here's, you know, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm wondering. You know, what are, what are your thoughts? That's the way that I would approach it. I think part of that, part of that response as well is determined by what, um, what your coach already knows. In other words, does the, is the coach aware of the situation with the two assistant principals yet? Or is this an initial time when not only do you have to convey the problem with the overcrowding and the, and the concerns of the parents, but you've also got to convey your leadership uh, team challenges or you know, does the, does the um, coach already know about the challenges that you have with you know, the, the kind of the, um, the succession of, of the assistant principals and, and how they fit into the picture uh, so that that person is already aware of, of that challenge before tackling the next one of how to deal with the tsunami of overcrowded classes. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, Jerry. Yeah, so given your role and your responsibilities, <clears throat> um, if it's not the role of the, that new principal, given your role and your responsibilities, how might you respond to all of what you have been exposed to around these stakeholders um, with what you do? Um, would, would, would your response change in what you might say or do, or is it something else that you... Um, Is there anything else that you might want to add, given your current role and responsibilities? Okay, all right, let's keep going. Therese, I just had a power outage, so I love. I was just trying to. Okay. Hold it. All right, that's fine. That's fine. So while that while that works out, you're in perfect. I'd love to know a little bit more about, um, Jerry, what do you do specifically, like, especially during this time, COVID-19, how has it changed? Because I'm thinking that stakeholders right now, the way we're managing them, certainly we're having to do so much more than, than usual. And that's what the sim is about. And as you think about that, I wonder the same for uh, Kristen and Lauren. Um, tell me a little bit more specifically about what you do. Sure. Well, my role is very different now than it was seven years ago when I was a superintendent of schools. My current role is associate director of the association. So my stakeholders are our members. <laughs> so it's different than when I was a superintendent and dealing with you know the stakeholders as a superintendent. So that's why I kind of step back because I think you know Lauren and um, Lauren and Kristen uh, are at the other end of things and and they're different type of processing and their day, my day-to-day -day work is is working with legislators as <laughs> stakeholders. So it's a little bit different than when I was um, in a school system. Right, 
right? So I know that Kristen had to step away for a second. What exactly she does she do? I wonder how it plays into these stakeholders that we're talking about today. Sure, Kristen is an assistant superintendent slash uh, curriculum instruction and assessment director in a in a large rural district that deals with multiple schools. I think she said on her um, on the call earlier this morning with the regional group that they had seven schools that had no power today. So, um, right. so she she deals a lot with uh, uh, staff professional development, training, um, also, you know, I'm assuming, and I don't, I don't know for sure, um, but I'm assuming that she deals with some of the parental uh, uh, issues around curriculum and that, and that type of thing. I, and she may have supervisory responsibilities. I would, I would imagine that in the district the size and the number of schools that she has some level of, of supervision. Jerry, I need to hire you as my high person. Sorry, Kristen, I thought you that were was, That was a great PR for me. Uh, hey, Laura, uh, Kristen, glad you're back. I was just thinking about giving your role and responsibilities for the three of you all. Um, you know, are there additional stakeholders that may have not been presented today that you're having to consider? And I learned that yours, uh, Jerry, really is an extension of what um, it, it, your stakeholders are, are, are more than what may be the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, the principal might have. And so um, Lauren and Kristen, when you think about the groups of stakeholders that you're having to manage beyond, of course, our, our students, of course, our parents and our internal teams, what other stakeholders are you having to juggle? Like you just did a moment ago, Kristen, when you had to take that call, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, always there's the school board. Um, uh, that you know that we're handling um, and you know communicating with working with um, uh, what's unique about my district is we're five towns um, and so we also have select boards and they often want to have conversations with us um, specifically around you know budget season um, uh, the parents and and just general community members obviously you've mentioned that um, and then um, you know we have um, you know, I think about our teachers and our support staff, but then I also think about, um, you know, our related service providers. Um, you know, we have different employee groups, um, some that have collective bargaining agreements and some that don't. Um, and so lots of times their concerns about things are very different than other employee groups. Uh, so working with those and those union presidents as well. Um, and then, you um, you know, our surrounding districts, we often consider things that we're working on and how that would affect um, uh, surrounding districts. We also are a technical center, but we work with two other technical centers. Um, so any kinds of changes that we're making to our programs or something that we're adding or eliminating, we would need to communicate that um, to sending schools and sending um, technical centers. So there's, um, you know, when, when you really start to think about all of the different groups that you have to work with and communicate with, it's, it, there's, a, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of little circles and a lot of those circles overlap with each other. So, um, and sometimes the message is the same and sometimes the message needs to be tailored to a specific group. Yeah, that's really powerful. It's, it, it, it is a lot. And so I wonder, and I like the way you put it in a, when you mentioned there's lots of circles and sometimes they overlap. There's lots of circles and sometimes they overlap. And then you having to be really the, the chief spearhead, if you will, each of you with whatever those numbers of stakeholders you're having to manage, you're having to step back and look at the political landscape, looking at the timing, looking at the mission, looking at the planning, the strategic alignment of it all and making big decisions, big bold decisions that still keep kids first while also keeping budget. And um, sometimes very much, you know, quite frankly, the political landscape. Would you all agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. So then I wonder, um, I wonder, Kristen, Jerry and Lauren, I wonder in that circle, I wanna just build off of how you shared that Kristen, where do you all fit? with yourself, with your well-being, um, 
with making sure that you're exhaling and you're actually eating. Because I know those days that your lunch, you go to work, you're packed and it's three o'clock and your lunch is still sitting. You know, your lunch, anybody, can anybody relate to that? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Lauren and Kristen are laughing. So how do you manage, um, you know, yourself as being a intricate stakeholder as well? Um, if you want to share any, like any of that uh, before we continue to the next slide, pitch in, because I think that's a really crucial part. What do you all believe? Yeah, I mean, I'm a firm believer in that cliche saying that you can't support others if your cup is empty. So very much making sure that whether it's a quick cup of coffee or walk around the school to get out of my office, something to revive me midday to be able to keep going. Yeah, well-being for yourself and others. Anybody else before we go to the next slide? Yeah, Patrice, I wanted to, to offer too that there are a number of people that have joined the, the, re, the webinar since you started. And so there are some other names out there that may um, want to contribute and certainly their perspectives would be welcome. Janet and Julie and Samantha and Brett are some that, that pop up. And so it might be great to find out who they are and what they do. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Jerry. Hey, everybody for uh, that's joined since we began. It's so good to have you. I'm really excited um, to be here with you today and to have you be here with us today. We're having an engaging conversation. We're right now in the middle of the stakeholders uh, management. So if it's okay, I might just pull on you to give your input or you just feel free to join in. Let's take a look at where we are right now with the school eva evacuation. Um, all right, later that week, a small fire in the bathroom trash can produces a large volume of smoke and the building is evacuated. It is not the most orderly affair, but everyone gets out of the school before the fire department shows up. By that time, AP Turner had extinguished the embers. You task him with investigating how the fire was started and by whom, but when you check in early, the following week, he has no information. A bit later, you get a visit from Brianna Sims, an enthusiastic and positive teacher who stops by every so often to bring you the latest gossip from the Falcony Lounge. Nobody, like we don't have anybody that does that on our team, right? Let's listen to what happens in this enthusiastic positive. We were teacher. celebrating another teacher's birthday today and I thought you'd like a piece of cake. Everyone is so glad the holidays are coming and looking forward to a few weeks of relief. And there always seems to be a large number of students who are absent a week or two before the holiday break and a week or two after. People were saying how hard it's been to deal with the higher enrollment and larger class sizes. A lot of teachers are not feeling that they're getting enough support. Anyhow, the birthday celebration was a nice distraction. People were having a good laugh about how disorganized the evacuation was after last week's fire. Ms. Matthews seems more concerned about keeping kids from sitting on her car than she was getting out of the building. What a riot! Anyhow, did you want a piece of cake? After the teacher leaves, you look ahead to your next meeting with the APs. Which of the following would you consider to be the primary focus for the meeting? And here is poll. Um, there are several that we're able to participate in. Um, so take a look and select. Brian is going to launch the poll so you can select what you believe is the best decision here for you. You're considering your next steps as the AP. After the teacher leaves, you look ahead to your next meeting with APs. Which of the following would you consider to be the primary focus for the meeting? Okay, so far we've got, uh, got a couple of different answers that are showing up. Give you a few more seconds. All right, now we're pretty split.
Wow. Okay, this is really interesting. So we've got, if you haven't had a chance to, to, to answer, go ahead and do that now. Okay, perfect. All right, so pretty split at this time. We've got choice one as 50%. Choice one as 50%. And we have choice two, which is the holiday absences, is 17%. Um, so one of you said that. And then choice three, also 17%. One person said that. And for number four, team building, someone, one individual said that. I'm really curious to know, um, I'd be curious to know um, why you answered what you did and didn't do that's, you know, but let's move on and uh, maybe we can have that discussion about the next poll. All right, let's go to the next slide. Meeting with APs after making fire safety, the primary focus of your meeting with APs, they got to work and organize an assembly with the presentation from the local fire department and had a fire drill. Communications were sent to parents regarding the fire. Nonetheless, another small fire was set the following week, again, in a bathroom trash can and again, resulting in an evacuation. We as we leaders, we know all about this, right? We know. Let's go on to the next piece here. Given the success of your right. improved attendance initiative, what will you communicate to teachers regarding class sizes for the second semester? Pick the option below that would provide the most leverage. Well, once again, we have another poll so that we can address the class size. We know that the scenario here is that the classes have excelled um, and they've even had to um, you know, make some concessions and build out. And um, let's just take a look and see, we've got given the success of your improved attendance initiative, what will you communicate to teachers regarding class size for the second semester? Pick the option below that would provide the most leverage. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what do you believe? Will you choose choice one? Um, two, three, or four. The poll is looking split. We're at 50 and 50 with decisions here. Fifty and 50%. We're at 20, 40, and 40 percent. really split now. Okay. So far for choice one, we have one person, which is 17% of the group we have today. And at this time, nobody is selected number two. Uh, one person chose number three, two chose four, and two chose five. Would anybody like to talk Talk about why you didn't choose number two or why you chose what you did choose. I'm wondering what choice five is. Like, was choice five really four? No, that was, I, I was given that to put into the poll so that, but there wasn't a fifth choice. So you can just disregard the fifth choice. <laughs> Actually, Kristen, um, I think you bring up a great point. Thank you so much. So thank you. Um, that actually, that's, yeah, we're gonna treat that as choice four. So it looks like there was one person that did one, one chose the, the second one, and then um, two people chose the, 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 the fourth and fifth option. Um, in other words, um, yeah, it's, we didn't, there's no five, so. But I'm still curious, why did somebody choose what you chose? I chose uh, solicit what teachers 
have for support. I mean, it, it's the second semester. You're not going to be able to go out and hire new staff. You're not, you know, you can't just say, well, they're not going to change because that's the contractual limit. That's just heartless. And if the, if the, um, you know, you just, I think if they have issues, they can continue to communicate with you directly or individually, but I don't think that's the preferred, you know, the preferred method because you have some that are going to communicate anyway. So you look at how can we support, you know, how can we support your needs for the second semester? You know, do you need some professional development? Um, you know, how, how are you going to work with, with groups or, um, you know, what is, what are the instructional strategies that you can employ? I mean, it sounds as though, you know, in, in looking at the scenario as it's presented initially, that there's been some, perhaps some lack of PD in the past because this has not been an emerging issue and now all of a sudden it is. So it may require some, some instruction and PD around differentiation or personalization and, and that type of thing. All right, thanks for your input. Um, I echo what um, Jerry said. I also chose number four, um, and I thought about it um, uh, much like Jerry said. Is you know we really can't make that change right now, but what what supports can we put into place currently? Um, but also um, soliciting what teachers want um, for support or need for support would help in the planning process um, when we are going to be looking to reduce those um, class sizes, or if we can't reduce those class sizes. What are they going to need? Um, so what professional development? So that would help us make a plan for the following year. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Moving forward. Next, how will you best communicate your message regarding class size issues to teachers? We won't launch the poll here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll talk about it. How would how would you communicate in this situation? Would you send an email? Would you speak to the influential stakeholders? Would you address it at a staff meeting? Or would you ask your AP to handle it? I don't know that there's a one size fits all. It, it depends, I guess. I think there's a little bit of all of that involved. I think that, you know, you're having a conversation with your APs, but not tasking them with disseminating it. Probably the staff meeting is the best way because then everybody hears a consistent message. But before the staff meeting, I think that, that you talk to some influential uh, stakeholders, some of your key people, maybe the, the union folks in the building that hopefully you established a good and positive relationship with and say, this is what we're going to do. Um, you run through the plan, you get some feedback, you explain to your, um, you know, have a conversation with the assistant principals with regards to their role in things. You, you address the thing at a staff meeting and you follow up with an email, thanking them for their understanding and, you know, working together, we can all work through this and it's not the end of the world. It's kids. Let's go. Thanks, Jerry. Anyone else want to offer? Well, how, how would you best communicate this message about the class size? Well, one thing is that, um, you know, you may, you may decide that the options that are here, it is a combination or perhaps um, it's none of the above, given uh, your role specifically with the stakeholders you have. Um, and this starts the conversation of which direction to go. And I see that in the chat, um, Lauren is sharing, I do as well. It needs to be communicated in various ways. That's what Lauren is saying. Um, Kristen is also sharing that I agree with Jerry. Thank you. All right, let's see what happens next. Needs for support. The response to your solicitation of needs that teachers have to support larger class size is almost unanimous. 
we want to go back to smaller class sizes. Yeah, you know, we heard this, right? Okay. All right, there's a message that we're gonna hear. Let's go ahead and listen to that. Regarding the I am here because I called the school several times without getting a return call and got one response to my emails from a teacher that I found quite disturbing. My daughter Faith was out on an extended absence and did not get any makeup work from her teachers. I thought the upcoming holidays would be a perfect time to get the missed content covered, but the teacher who did respond to me said they have a no makeup policy. What is that about? They're telling me that my daughter cannot learn the material because she was out of school during that time? That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I want you to address this right now, and if I don't hear back from you or those teachers by the end of the week, I will call the superintendent. Do I make myself clear? Like none of us have ever had this happen to us, right? None of us. No, not us. This is not happening. Um, action on the no makeup policy. After meeting with Ms. Howard, you tasked AP Matthews with speaking with the teachers involved and finding out why this student did not receive any makeup work. She says this is a family that she is not familiar with. She will find out what she can do and report back. Later, Mr. Ambrose stops by your office to vote, excuse me, to voice some concerns. Let's listen in. Well, this is an email and it says from superintendent to the principal checking in, just a quick reminder that test scores in January are especially important this year as MMB needs to demonstrate progress towards academic achievement. I hope you are leveraging your APs, motivating your teachers and rallying your students to excel. Also, I received a phone call from Ms. Howard whose daughter was out for a long time. Please provide me with the information on the situation. Regards, Dr. Sanchez. I wanted to let you know that I've got a no makeup policy and I have good reason for it. I view a critical part of my job as getting these students ready for college and ready for the real world. They don't get to make up work in college, and I don't know of a job that lets you make up work after you miss a day. If I can't maintain that policy, I feel like I'm failing my students and doing them a disservice. That's all. Have a good day. All right. So when we think about stakeholders, uh, think about the impact around having to manage them, like we said, the, the, all the details that Kristen shared, and as she mentioned, all the circles and how they overlap. Next. Can I have someone jump in and read that for us? Sure, I'll read it. Yeah. Awaiting yeah. AP Matthews. The email from the superintendent heightens the urgency of getting information about the lack of makeup work for Mrs. Howard's daughter. AP Matthews has built relationships with many of the parents in the school community. And while she's not familiar with this family, it seems reasonable to expect she will act in their interest. At the same time, AP Matthews has demonstrated a sense of loyalty to many of the faculty. So it will be interesting to see if she seems to act on their behalf. All right. Real quick. I That's spoke to the teachers who didn't provide Faith Howard with makeup work after she was out for a long time. They all have no makeup policies. And without a medical excuse, they don't feel obligated to provide her with makeup work. I don't understand why the parent can't be more concrete about why Faith was out for so long. The teachers have these policies in place to help reduce absenteeism. They believe students are less likely to miss class if they will not have the opportunity to make up any work they miss. Each teacher was adamant that if an exception was made for Faith, then everyone would ask for an exception. Teachers have their own ways of working, and if these policies are effective in their classrooms, I don't see any reason to change them. As far as I'm concerned, micromanagement never does anyone any good. What will you do? We will launch the poll here. 
what will you do? AP Matthews is obviously unwilling to challenge teachers regarding their no makeup policies. However, a no makeup policy clearly will cause more students to perform poorly, especially those who have recently returned to school. What will you do with respect to AP Matthews performance relative to this matter? And here we do have five choices. Will you email her? And this again, you'll put this in your poll, your decision. Will you speak to her privately? Discuss AP's roles regarding no makeups policies at the cabinet meeting, or perhaps you'll do a letter to the file or even inform the superintendent. Right now we're pretty split, 50-50. One third, one third, and one third. 25, 25, 25. All right. So as Brian checks the chat, let's talk about um, the poll results here. Uh, so we've got literally like 25%, 25%, everything is 25% straight across the board. Really curious to know, uh, let's see, would someone like to say why they did not choose an email, the email option? I think it's a conversation, it's not an email. Um, so I, I dismissed that one pretty quickly. I do think that it's a combination though. I, once again, I don't think that one of these is particularly the silver bullet. I don't think you put a letter in a file without a conversation and uh, uh, you know, you have the conversation and then you sum it up with a letter in the file. It, it's that uh, egregious. So. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can fast track to see what happens next. Brian? Celebrating attendance. Last night, the attendance team celebrated students who had improved their attendance from last year. The evening was a wonderful success, bringing about 33 parents and 60 students. As you walk through the halls today, you can see students proudly wearing the new MMB shirts that they received at the event. Mixed success. You meet with the APs and develop a draft makeup policy with their input. It's decided that the APs will then bring in, bring it to the to those teachers who were identified as having no makeup policies for their feedback. AP Matthews relates the process to the teachers she is tasked with speaking with, but does not engage them in dialogue about the draft policy. AP Turner had more success and is awaiting feedback from the two teachers he spoke to. Now we, there's a topic of the pervasive no makeup policies. After some inquiries, it seems that no makeup policies are not isolated, but rather common among the teachers. You are concerned that these policies, which may or may not be well-intentioned, will shortchange students of learning opportunities. And so new desks arrived and due to the additional students, more furniture was needed to accommodate students and some of the larger classes. When it was delivered, it seemed like the school gave a sigh of relief in unison. New desks were welcomed heartily. How will you address the issue of pervasive no makeup policies? You've got five options. We're gonna launch the poll with the question being, how will you address the issue of pervasive no makeup policies? 
sending out an article that discusses the negative impact policies, meeting with a group of teachers who use the no makeup policies, sending a memo forbidding no makeup policies, leaving these policies as is for the year, or meeting with teachers who do not, who do not have makeup policies. Dr. Mason, I think we probably need to think about wrapping up here now that we're at the top of the hour. Okay, perfect. So there you have it. Um, you can go as quickly or slowly with your SIMS as you're working with those or how you use it. Um, can you put the slide back up just in case someone new came up of me, please? Either Kimra or Brian. Uh, I'm not, unfortunately I'm not presenting James's and he doesn't have the slide. Because okay, great. Nara, I'm I'm real sorry about that. Oh, no, you're fine. So again, um, I'm I'm Patrice Patrice Mason, and I'm so glad that everybody we had a chance to connect today. Um, again, I provide a three level total solution turnkey. Um, around well-being for staff and students, and I can be reached right there. Uh, you can see it's, it's called the Child's Champion 5D Mason model, as well as my cell. And um, thank you so much um, for School Sims and for this organization, the New Hampshire Administrators, for allowing us to present today. Be safe. Take care, guys. Thank you so much for coming. That was wonderful information. There we go. Where's my recording button?